Yes, yes, guys. Welcome to Everything Bite Size. This is the Salt Shed Podcast, and I'm here with my brother, my literal blood brother, Lee. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you. It's interesting to not start a podcast. Yeah, not even joking either. He's literally my blood brother. Um, so today we're going to be talking about veganism. My my bro is, is, is like a passionate vegan, and I've always been interested in the idea of vegetarianism and veganism. Um because morally it seems like it's it it stands on its own two feet and you can't really argue with the morals surrounding it um and there's a lot of misconceptions about veganism that i want to clear up that i don't that i want to know um and i'm and what i'm hoping is is maybe by the end of this episode i'm more convinced and swayed um towards moving to at least vegetarianism or something like that so um uh, my brother is passionate about veganism. When did this start for you? So that's probably a more um, difficult question to answer than you'd think, because I think a while before I went vegan, I, my ethics aligned with veganism. Um, but I didn't really have a vegan influence to encourage m- me to go vegan. I wasn't that familiar with vegan content. I I was just heavily against animal abuse. Uh, I think I had misconceptions about how difficult it would be to to adopt a, a plant based diet. Um, yeah. What? So. So, so for, sorry, I interrupted you then, mate. I'm I'm so fucking bad for that. No, it's um, all good. So um, like, just so the viewers know, I'm fucking crazy. I've got bipolar, so I interrupt people a lot. I'm really bad for it. But anyway, I shouldn't self-deprecate like that, should I? Because then it just warms up, is it? <laughs> um, That's so good. But yeah, like, remember? Do you remember growing up when our when our mum was vegan and vegetarian? Yeah, I remember back then trying some chocolate soy drink thing, and it tasted like shit. Uh, I remember yeah, that much. Yeah, <laughs> it's. In- it seems like um, veganism has evolved a lot, like a tremendous amount in the past 10 years or so. And it's a lot more accessible, like like, like McDonald's doing a vegan thing and, you know, like things like that. It seems like it's it seems like there's less and less excuse for eating meat now because there are alternatives that are more than um, sufficient, like um, like like corn and stuff like that like fungus based um, meats and like I can't tell the difference to be honest with you like so um and and I've had the vegan burger and it's really really nice like it and it does taste like meat and it feels like meat the texture so like I don't see why we can't adopt it one thing that does concern me is is it sustainable uh, uh, in an ecological sense Yes, I think so. There was a report, I believe, by the UN that showed that if everyone adopted a plant-based diet, there'd be significantly less land usage. And I think that's partly because, obviously, livestock, they need to... They eat crops as well. Um, So a a lot of agricultural land for crops are uh, are used for livestock. Yeah, don't they cut a lot of trees down to make space for these this livestock yes and and in in the amazon i believe a lot of deforestation is for soy and that soy is to feed livestock as well as yeah like, actual yeah cattle yeah they literally grape the environment don't they like i don't want to say the actual word because they get the video like done in but <laughs> They gr- they grate the environment. They cut down all the trees, sell that as timber, and then um, then they they just make land infertile over time, don't they? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's common in in, in the Amazon. I don't know if it's in yeah, Colombia or Brazil, but they I think I believe they actually burn down sec- sec- sections of the rainforest. Um, yeah. Oh wow, they actually burn it down. That is mad. Yeah. And um, am I right in saying that? Um, Am I right in saying that um, if there, if we stopped um, factory farming beef, it would have a significant effect on the environment because of methane? Yeah, I think that if I could be wrong about this, but I believe the factory farming is actually the most um, environmentally friendly and um, way to to get beef, basically, like because 
the uh, if the methane issue is largely for you know like free roaming grass fed cows i believe so so factory farming has less of an impact than um organic farming yes i believe i believe so um or, 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 and and the thing is a lot of non-vegans as well would say that um you know they tend to say uh, i have an issue with factory farming but um i think if they're like grass-fed free roaming then it's fine but actually environmentally that that could be worse oh wow can you explain a bit more why it it could just be that the that this isn't actually something specifically that i've researched but i believe you're kind of containing the environmental concerns oh. more, um yeah, and 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 they feed um don't they feed beef um uh, something that's unnatural for them to eat like grains instead of grass. Yeah, I, I don't know about the. Are, are you saying from like a health implication point of view, or I, I'm I'm not too versed in this. Um, um, I think was. what they do, from what I what I, what the little that I do know, is that instead of feeding them grass, what they do is they um. Sorry, guys, I'm in the in the middle of ch transitioning from southern to basically northern, so my dialect is all over the place. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, 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 from what I from what I know, they feed uh, cattle uh, grain instead of um, grass. Um, I think one because it's cheaper, and two because it fattens them up and they grow bigger. Oh, right. Um, okay. But do they? Is it true that they use hormones um, in in livestock? I believe so. Yeah, this is pro probably actually something that my my partner would know a lot more about than than I do. But I believe that's yeah. that's the case. Yeah, for for me, it's um, a much maybe a more simple perspective about not treating animals as commodities regardless so yeah. so we can we can talk about the environmental stuff and i'm not saying that's not important um but but for me it's about animal rights uh, so yeah. for, for example if um if there was an environmentally friendly and sustainable way to enslave humans um i i wouldn't consider it fine to do so yeah so uh, i i agree, i agree with you i'm assuming some things but i agree with you that um animals have sentience and they have like character and personality and a, and I, I don't know if you believe in a soul you've got you've got very interesting um theological uh, uh uh views um which we could could go into now or on another video um but i believe as a christian i believe we have souls and i believe animals have souls as well um if you do you believe in souls and if not do you believe that animals would have souls if if they it did exist? Well, I use the word soul, but I, when I use it, I'm not referencing any sort of supernatural phenomena. Uh, I just yeah. mean like the uh, personality, basically, and uh, identity and stuff like that, and co consciousness. Um, and yeah. Sorry, go on, man. No, it's right. Uh, I was just going to say and and these are things that I think most people believe other species have as well to us at least to some extent there's yeah there's there's um because you can you 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 can get very like there's if if you're um around a horse or a cow a lot it will favor you than other people wouldn't it like you can build genuine relationships with animals um that um that have meaning and purpose and um and like are um symbiotic you can have like symbiotic relations like dogs being man's best friend what confuses me is why do we differentiate like dogs and cats between cattle like because they're to me they're all on the same level so if if we eat uh if we eat cows we what's why don't we eat dogs does that make sense it does make sense yeah i think it's a good question of course, there's some cultures that do eat dogs, but a lot, a lot of people in our culture will say that's wrong, and I think there's a lot of cognitive dissonance there. They haven't really thought that through. Uh, right. Like I, I had someone at work. I, I asked the same thing, and they, and they said, uh, yeah, but dogs are, dogs are pets. Um, but there's people that have cows as pets, and um, yeah, uh, people have pigs as pets. Yeah, yeah, and and 
Uh, and I, I just think it's weird to it would be weird to ignore the fact that they're sentient and can feel pain and stuff and say well it's fine yeah. because because we own them so it's fine which is essentially what you're yeah. saying when you're saying it's fine because because they're pets so, like it, it's it's it to me like I, I i can only see reasons to become a vegan <laughs> like i i'm not strong enough at the moment or um what's the word i'm looking for um i'm not passionate enough about it to actually turn vegan but i fully sympathize with the movement um like i get it like well i get it from a cursory sort of standpoint like um because i love animals like i've always loved animals and um like you said you can have like cows a cow can be your friend like and it sounds so weird but they literally can can't they like like yeah. and horses really close with their owners and stuff like that and it's it's um it's so sad to think that documentary you sent me i only got five minutes into that because because the the way they were treating the piglets um mm. was fucking disgusting like they must have no soul imagine being imagine being the one the person in charge of picking which animals get slaughtered and slaughtering them and I, i'll tell you what yeah like what one thing that really 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 affected me was is um i went to do a job in like it was turkey plucking basically uh, around yeah. christmas um and um i got a look at the slaughter um the slaughter spot where they where they sl slice the the turkeys are hanging upside down um and they, basically you grab them and it doesn't matter if you break their legs you know like you just have to mm. grab them um and then they hang them upside down and then they get their throat slit and I tell you what, I fucking felt sick seeing that. Like, um, yeah. I felt for that animal. Yeah, that's because you have empathy. And I think a lot of people will say, you know, it's fine to exploit these animals as long as you treat them well and give them a good life. But I think what we forget is that the moment you've condemned them to being a commodity, they're, they're there for our financial gain or for our pleasure or something like that. It's naturally going to lead to, uh, lead to this because... At the end of the day, businesses, they care about efficiency, what's cost effective. And if, yeah. the, if these sentient beings are there to make the money, um, their welfare is just not going to be a priority. Yeah, yeah. the, the CEOs, um, they, like you probably knew this, but uh, among, say you get, basically there are more CEO psychopaths than there are in the general population. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, because they're oh, willing to oh, to take actions at the expense of others. So. Exactly, like the cocoa cocoa bean trade. Yeah. Um, that, that is a bomb. Like I, I don't know if you've seen that, but the slaves, like you, well, you probably know this. I know you're not stupid. There's mo like modern day slavery is still going on in many different forms around the world. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm guilty of supporting some of that. That, that's another thing about being vegan like we're not claiming that vegans are perfect um or anything like that it's not but it, veganism isn't even about vegans which might sound like a weird thing to say but v veganism is about the victims right it's about trying to just live a way where we reduce um we reduce the harm that we cause or the exploitation um it's not about can I wouldn't even say it's about condemning others. Um, it, it's just about aligning our actions with our beliefs. And naturally, I, I want to encourage others to do the same, um, but that's not essential to to be vegan. Yeah, and it seems like it seems like um, it's it's naturally sort of creeping into the public domain um, with because there's obviously got to be a demand for it if mcdonald's are putting all the effort into designing a burger and advertising it or whatever um so there, there's got to be a demand for it so to me um i used to think the plight of veganism so to speak um it it was uh doomed to fail like i thought there's no way vegans are going to become mainstream um and then i was shocked when um when like you know like it's, it's, it's realistic that we could move to a plant-based diet it's in the future now, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it's so. It's actually realistic. Yeah, um, when I, I was saying before I went vegan, I had this misconception of how practical, impractical it, it would be. And 
uh, one thing that what basically made me go vegan was someone else at work um, adopted a plant-based diet for for health reasons they said um, but we were talking about all these options that are available in fast food places that are like at such I think uh, I don't think there was many at McDonald's at the time but it was other pay- places like pizza places and yeah um, and I started to get excited about all this vegan junk food and <laughs> Um, and then I researched it looking at activist videos such as Ed Winters um, became more and more convinced on on the moral sides but as I as I adopted it I quickly found out that it was much easier than I'd imagined Um, uh, of course uh, uh, I'm at the stage now that if I had to for example only survive on rice and tofu I I would but fortunately it's nothing like that yeah it's it's um it's it's, it's been made more accessible has not it um yeah. and uh, i think people are, are scared to take that that first step that first leap one thing that i wanted to bring up is the the notion that you can't um sustainably live nutritionally on a vegan diet but um from what you've told me in the past um i get the sense that that's actually not true yeah, you can get all the um, nutrients you need on a vegan diet if if you supplement B twelve. Um, I think it's good to just take a multi a multivitamin. Um, yeah, so so the B twelve is synthesized; it isn't taken from an animal. That's right. Yeah, I think there might oh. be some there might be some sources, if I'm not mistaken, from seaweed and such that um, isn't synthesized. Uh, I could be wrong on that. But uh, okay. but ideally, you know, you know, if realistically, if you if you're going to get enough, you should take a supplement. So it's 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 a very polarizing issue, veganism, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think that I believe that <laughs> there's some evidence to suggest there might have even been a study that vegans are the most hated demographic. Um, <laughs> wow! Well, so probably, probably probably then Christian second. <laughs> maybe. So I I was thinking it was a rather brave topic for the first episode but there you go yeah i thought we'd jump straight in man um so um what did what did you just say before that so i wouldn't advocate for a natural vegan diet right i think um yeah you you can be you can definitely be healthy while on a vegan diet um you should take a multivitamin which i would suggest is better than stabbing animals in the throat um <laughs> that's fair yeah that's fair mate. Like, so that's what it is though isn't it bluntly blunt, bluntly put it is killing a sentient being um it's it's yeah. like it i so badly want to have the strength to jump to at least vegetarianism or what's the other one pesca pesca what is it called pescatarian yeah so um yeah, like I, would, I guess I would see that as some harm re- reduction. Of course, in my mind, um, you know, if you animal. if you agree with the ethics, then you, the last thing you should support is like dairy and egg industry. I would argue the dairy industry, and you, if you were able to see the rest of that documentary, you you might agree with me that the dairy industry is actually more cruel than beef and chicken and. Right, because um, my other friend who's vegan, who I want to get on the podcast um, at some point, it would be interesting if we had a three-way conversation. Um, yeah. She, she, she told me briefly about the dairy industry and how evil it is, and, and um, she told me that um, cows, f- female cows, are basically um, all put always in a state of pregnancy, um, can't give in birth, so that they 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 produce milk all the time, but they get separated from the calves at birth, and and the, sometimes the cows actually cry at their 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 calf getting taken away. Yeah, the, of course. That the, yeah. So they're mammals. They have these uh, maternal instincts. They nurturing instincts. They want to look after their yeah. young and be with them. But we we want Being their taken away from someone. Sorry to interrupt. Like please carry on with your train of thought. But you you've literally taken a kid off of someone from a sentient being. Absolutely. Yeah. And. The, and and uh, your your friends right they often the mums will kind of 
run after them like mourn it like yearning for them um because they've just oh been my kidnapped. god and, and then repeatedly getting inseminated and, and 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 having the same process over and over again and then eventually getting cut up for me yeah and of course the the babies taken away from them the the male calves who don't produce milk i believe they they either get sold to the veal industry or they just get straight oh, up killed god. themselves so isn't isn't the veal industry really evil? Like they they're restricted, so they can't move. So their muscle tissue is um, uh, softer. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which is cruel. That's like putting someone in a box um, and just leaving them there. For for me, what um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's equally as bad as, uh, doing it to non-human animals as it is doing it to humans but what puts it in perspective for me is just imagining if humans were treated that exact same way um oh what if there was like a a, a predator higher than us that the factory farm does yeah yeah and maybe they're more intelligent and they say they try and justify it by saying well you know humans they're not as intelligent as us um you know they don't have they're not as capable of building as complex and advanced societies as us you know, you know, would it, would that mean it's morally it's okay for them to mass slaughter us for food? I don't. Yeah. There's a documentary I've been wanting to watch actually on Netflix called Christ Spiracy about these Christians who are vegan and I think they believe that veganism is. I don't know if they would say it's biblical. Is I I want to watch it so I have actually more um, more knowledge on it. But yeah, I. I, I definitely want to check that out. Um, hopefully, it doesn't just make me cringe. But yeah, because <laughs> like Phil, you're you're even though you're not religious, so to speak, um, you you're very interested in theology, aren't you? Yeah, and it'd also be useful too as well because I've I've spoken to other religious people about veganism, and sometimes they'll say things such as, well, um, they'll they'll think it's I guess biblically justified um so yeah. it, it, well it's biblically justified to eat meat but the factory farming seems unbiblical that's how i see it yeah that's fair enough i, th I think w what i would say is it, it may be the case that the the, the bible justifies it but it, it doesn't mandate it right so you have you still have the option to be more compassionate um you still have the option to to not support yeah. these industries so. let me find this first for you let me find this okay. verse. Let's get it up. I think you'll find it interesting. Um, you, it's about not judging someone. Okay, here we go. I found it. Philippians 14. All right, let me get this up. Because I know you're in, I know even though you're not a Christian, you, you're interested in, um, interested in such things. Um, but you should not criticize others for eating or for not eating. After all, God welcomes everyone. For eating or for not eating. That's it. I don't. Yeah. Do you know I'll say that again. To? Well, um, yeah, that's 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 just referring to what people eat and what they don't eat. Um, oh, okay. And it's. I'll read it again. It says, uh, "But you should not criticize others for eating or for not eating. After all, God welcomes everyone." Um, so the way I the way I see it is God put animals on the earth um, and and we're we're allowed to eat them, but the factory farming is is evil, like absolutely evil, and I, I know God would not approve of the way those animals are treated. Back in biblical times, there like there wasn't factory farming, was there? Um, animals. I, I know you don't really like this argument. But animals did have a better life, didn't they? Like they they were more free and more free range back then. Um, and um, I feel like it's just gotten out of hand, out of control. Yeah. Um, of course, I'd say I wouldn't say it was good, but yeah, it, was, it wasn't as bad as factory farming. I'd say. Yeah, there's something so much. sinister about factory farming. It's so sinister to think that lives are getting lost every second what was i going to ask you um so it's weird how polarizing this issue is so you did you say that vegans are the most hated demographic do do you think that's because 
it makes people i think you might have even said this to me before actually um it's because it makes people um exam sort of their subconscious examines themselves and feel shameful so they project their hate onto the vegans yeah essentially people don't like to feel judged um and just telling people that you're vegan i think starts uh <laughs> It starts a chain reaction in their brain where they and then they start to feel like they're being judged exactly the same with christianity yeah i could see that i've seen some uh irrationally triggered uh, atheists before but who might yeah who might have the same beliefs as me or lack of beliefs but the way they've reacted to an argument or something has been pretty cringe there's, there's no, yeah it is cringe there's no need for hate is there like um like people, uh, people should be able to have like YouTube comment sections are atrocious, man. <laughs> um, they're, they're horrible, aren't they? Twitter like, is it's, the worst, probably. It's like it's like a den of thieves and scoundrels. Like um, like yeah. people, people just have no time. People don't want to listen; they want to talk. Um, and it, it, I feel like I feel like there's some similarities with Christianity and veganism because. Like you said, when you tell someone, it, it, on in my case, if I tell someone that I'm a Christian, I see a thought process flash through their head, like, um, like oh, okay, here's another, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, and it's like it's like they automatically judge you negatively because of it, and it, and and it's a shame because there's there's radical idiots on both sides of any polarizing issue, um, and it's it makes whatever side they're on look bad yeah I... like some radical vegans in there that are absolutely um toxic but I, I would say from what i've seen they're a minority but um it's enough what it's enough to cast a shadow over the whole thing yeah i mean i feel awkward i guess addressing that toxic part because i'm sure there's many people well probably most people would consider me one of that uh one of those minority uh, extreme, really extremists yeah yeah it, I've, I've done and said some things that would put me in that category um, the, the people i'm talking about are not just um uh, radical though they're uh, toxic um i don't see you as toxic whatsoever we've had a very amicable conversation about this and we've spoken about this before in the past as well um the in depth and um you're not toxic i i see you as like um a, a good example of a vegan like someone who you can talk to and um who will take the time to explain it um and isn't divisive whereas uh, there's people who meet eat, meat eaters who are so radically against veganism that they're toxic as hell and same vice versa same as you know like with uh christianity and uh, lgbtq there's radicals on both sides there's nothing wrong being radical i see myself as radical christian yeah. um but um, I'm not toxic about it. Like um, I, I'm open to other people's beliefs and listening to them. Like me and you have some really interesting theological conversations, which is something I want to do for another episode. Is I want to talk about um, God and the Bible with you because I think you'd have some really interesting um, thoughts and, and insights, um, and I think we could learn together through it. But um, I, d I don't want to derail the conversation too much. So we've had a discussion about veganism. I think we've dredged up pretty much everything we can. I'm very, I'm even more interested in becoming a vegan after this conversation. I don't know if I will, but I'm down with the with the morality of it. You know, like um, I, I, I really, really, I can't agree more with it. And 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 a lot of the myths have been, um, you know, like. Um, like I, I've, you've helped me deal with a lot of the myths surrounding veganism. So it's from what I can tell, it is sustainable. You can you can be healthy and not malnourished. Morally, it's the right thing to do. It lines up with the Bible, in my opinion. There's no reason for me not to do it. There's every, every time I look at veganism, all I find is more reasons to become a vegan. Um, and it's it's in inspirational for me to see you um be so passionate about veganism because i remember when we were growing up you loved your rustlers burgers man like you was all over those burgers weren't you 
yeah I, i'm big on junk food so um it's definitely a change um for for animal rights it's not for my health or anything like that or or the yeah. environment even it's uh some people argue that it's much better for the environment but no, for me it's just about not treating sen other sentient beings um in such a way yeah i think that's a perfect time perfect point to wrap it up 